Let's take a look at the basic trig ratios that you learned about in grade 10. We're going to start off by looking at uh, a couple of triangles, and we've got the, the lengths of the sides described in this uh, table. And so here's the picture of the first one, uh, here's a picture of the second one, and you can see that this, this side here that's length 4 became, uh, we multiplied it by 3 and got 12, and we multiplied this side by 3 and we got 9, this side we multiplied by 5 and we got 15. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this angle in both of the triangles and see how they compare. And you can probably make a prediction about this. So you can see that we're getting 36.9 in both of the triangles, even though the triangles are different sizes. So we have two angles that are the same. What if we compare the ratio of BC to AB in both triangles? So 3 over 5 and 9 over 15. So if we did 3 divided by 5, that is 0.6. And if we do 9 divided by 15, it's also 0.6. This ratio is also known as the sine ratio. Okay, so this is the sine of angle A. Now, what if we take AC divided by AB? So, in the first triangle, AC is 4, and AB is 5. So, so we're going to get 0.8. And what if we take 9, uh, we take the 12 and divide it by the 15. We also get 0.8. So are these just coincidences or is there a pattern here? So AC divided by AB actually has a name for it as well and that's called the, the cosine of uh, angle A. So we're comparing different pairs of sides. Um, so we've compared uh, BC over AB, we've, com we've uh, compared AC over AB. Now we're going to compare BC over AC. So if we do that, we get by 4, which is 0.75. And what if we do 9 divided by 12? Also 0.75. We call that ratio the tangent ratio. 
So even though both of these triangles are different sizes, they have the same angles and the same ratios. So we gave names to these ratios last year. We said that um, the, the sine of an angle A is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And these, these words are convenient to use when you're looking at a specific angle. So we call this the opposite side because it's across from or opposite the angle. We call this the adjacent side to A because it's beside A. Adjacent means beside. So, and this side we already know as the, the hypotenuse. It's the longest side of a right triangle. So these are the three different ratios, and which is a review. And so if we're looking at angle A, there are three different ways to compare the sides. What if you were looking at angle B? Well, if you're looking at angle B, then the names of the sides change. This is now our opposite side, and this is our adjacent side, because this is beside the angle B, and this is across from the angle B. And so all of these ratios um, are different for angle B in terms of AC and AB and BC. Okay, so write the trigonometric ratios for an angle. Write the trigonometric ratios for sine A, cos A, and tan A. Express each answer as a fraction in lowest terms. Okay, so we want the sine of A. The sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And in this case, the side opposite A is length 12. And our hypotenuse actually isn't given, so we have to stop and calculate what the hypotenuse is. Okay, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which says that for a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we're talking about the lengths of the sides. So we do have a, a and b. We can calculate c from that. So using my calculator, 81 plus 144 equals 225. A number squared is equal to 225, and I know it's a, whole, it's a positive number, so I'm going to take the square root of 225, and I'm going to get 15. So now that I have that, I can go back to calculating the sine of angle A, 12 over 15. We're going to reduce our fractions to 4 over 5. Cosine of A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent is 9, the hypotenuse is 15, we get 3 over 5. The tangent of A is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 12 over 9, and that works out to 4 over 3 as a fraction when you reduce it.
Determine trigonometric ratios using a calculator. So the sine of 40 degrees, that's a ratio. That's some fraction. But our calculator will tell us what that is. Notice that I'm in degree mode. And two decimal places will do. Find the measure of an angle given its trigonometric ratio. Okay, so we know that the cosine of an angle is 0.6789. We want to find out what that angle is using our calculator. Okay, so the angle A is cos inverse of 0.6789. And the way you use your calculator, you'll notice that we have inverse cosine here it's in the yellow so we're going to use the yellow button and we're going to put in 0.679 and this tells us that that original angle was 47 degrees Find the length of a side. Okay, so a, we want to find the length of A and we're going to round our decimal to one decimal place. So the sides that are involved here. Uh, because we're dealing with angle A, this is our opposite side and this is our adjacent. Okay, so if we have opposite and adjacent, we go back to our trig ratios. We know that the, the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. So in our case, we have the adjacent, but we are looking for the opposite. So this is the ratio that we actually want to use. So we're going to say the tangent of 36 degrees Actually, we'll do one step before we do that step, just to make it a little bit more complete. So tangent A is opposite over adjacent. And then we'll sub in the 36 degrees. And our A is the variable we're looking for. And the 26 is what we have. So we want to solve this equation. We want to isolate A. A is being divided by 26, so we want to do the reverse to both sides of the equation, which is to multiply both sides by 26. And we get twenty-six. 
26 times the tangent of 36, 18.9. and the units are in centimeters. Find the measure of angle A to the nearest tenth of a degree. So looking at the diagram, When we look at angle A, we have the hypotenuse and we have the adjacent. Which of the three tri primary trigonometric ratios involve adjacent and hypotenuse? So we've got the cosine of A. And it's with respect to A. You have to look at A. You can't be looking at B. If you look at B, then the names of the sides are different. So the cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of A is 17 over 22. So what we can do is take the inverse cosine of both sides. So here's another way of writing it. I didn't write it this way the last time. I'm showing all of my steps. And I'm going to just I'm not even going to simplify, I'm not even going to turn that fraction into a decimal. I'm just going to plug the whole thing to the calculator, let the calculator handle all the hard work. And I got 39.4 degrees. Solve a right triangle. Okay, so when we say to solve a right triangle, uh, what we mean is find all the missing side lengths and all the missing angles. So, always do the easy part first. Okay, do all the easy thing, do all the easiest things first, and hopefully that'll make the the later steps easier as well. So we look at our triangle and we have two angles. We have 90 and we have 60. We can use the fact that the uh, internal angles of a triangle add up to 180. So we can calculate the angle B, sorry, angle A. Angle A is 30, and so at this stage um, we can we can find side A or side B. Doesn't really matter. Let's do side A first. So if we are using this angle and this side, and we're looking for this side, that means we're we're using the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and that means that we want to use the cosine ratio. So the cosine of B B being 60 is going to be A over 25. And just like before, we can multiply both sides by 25. And we 
get 12.5. These are in meters. Okay, so we have one side, we have one angle, uh, we have one more side to find, and that is side B, small b. So we could use this angle since we have it, or we could use this angle since we have it. I'm going to just go ahead and use uh, this angle here. So this time, if I use uh, the hypotenuse and the opposite, I'm talking about the sine ratio. And this looks very similar to the last one. Now I said there was actually a couple of ways you could have solved B. What if we had used uh, what if we had used the other angle? So we could have used angle the uh, the angle of thirty, and we could have actually used A as well. So let's say we used this angle and this side. What would have happened there? So if we're talking about this angle, this side, this side, we're talking about adjacent, opposite, and therefore the tangent ratio. So we said that A was 30 degrees. We calculated A to be 12.5, and the adjacent is what we were looking for. So I want to get uh, rid of this fraction. So what I'm going to actually do is multiply both sides by B. So then I get I'm trying to isolate B, so I'm going to divide both sides by tangent 30. I divided both sides by tangent 30. I kind of skipped that step and simplified it. Notice how I'm not evaluating this until the very end, because I don't want to deal with messy decimals as I'm writing on my page, because it just makes me write more. So I'm leaving that to the end. Use my algebra skills to, to simplify, and then at the end, make the calculator do the hard work. There's a lot of ways you could have solved this. So I get 